Hello everybody and welcome to the Cash Cast. Uh, I want to throw out a quick thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, we got Horn and Associates, we got Goat Funding, uh, we got Hammer Gods Construction, Real Estate's Work Live, and our title sponsor, Key City Capital. Today we've got Ty and Pat talking about relationships and the different ways uh, relationships come up in business, and you know what are, what are the ways that we need to to nurture those and and move relationships forward, you know, to better service both sides of the relationship. And then we're going to be doing a little education on HUDs. We're going to pick up the 13 deals we closed last week, and we're going to review each HUD in depth. So y'all sit back and enjoy the show. Cash, cast coming in fast. Relative info on investments that will smash. Miss out on this, you'll be coming in last. Acoustic force, bringing the intro blast. Hey, this is Vanilla Ice, and I'm chilling with my man, Ty Lassiter. And I want to tell you, one command. Stop, collaborate, and listen. Key City Capital is about to throw down. So get it how you live it, and always remember, cash, cash, baby. <laughs> Bet. I have had a number of sellers that have told us that we got the deal because we touched their their property, we touched them, we had marketing to them, we were in front of them more often than our competition was. We are live, on live. It's your boy Pat Hilton with Ty Lassiter. What's up guys? Cash, cast, baby. In the house. That's right, that's having, right. We're having too much fun with it. Back I love it. again, check we're back. it to wreck it. T totally, totally. <laughs> so uh, today we're talking about relationships, nurturing relationships. We we threw our boy Boone on there. Boone was dying to do the intro today. Yeah, he was. We got him on an iPhone video and, and got him on the show today. So that's that makes us happy. Um, so the internet is all about social proof these days. Everybody wants to see everything these days. Yeah. So what I did was. <laughs> I, I hopped into the cabinet with old Ty and we're going to show how the relationships that you have with the marketplace are when you nurture those the right way, that's how you're going to get deals. Yeah. That's how it's worked for me my entire life. I mean, I'm not some kind of like superstar player on the internet or anything, but every single person that I've been around, I tried to give as much possible value as I could so that that would come back to me in the long term. Yeah. 100%. Um, my, one of my coaches, coaches this to me and this is something that I um, that I utilize in my business 100% every single day um, it, it's the it's the primary focus around how we build our systems and processes but as an owner of a business as an entrepreneur as a CEO 70% of your time should be spent on building and nurturing relationships then 20% of your time towards branding and marketing, right? You've got to be as a head of your company, you've got to be well aware of what's going on in your branding and marketing. And so in real estate, you know, that's um, sending out your marketing for um, generating leads, marketing and branding for uh, bringing in capital partners, um, marketing and branding for all of the other businesses that we have going on, right? And then the last 10% is knowing your numbers, right? And so we have a team, uh, I have an accounting team of four people that, that run our accounting department, right? Um, that is their primary responsibility is our reporting, right? And generating reporting for us. So I don't need to be involved in that on a day-to-day basis. But once a month, every month, um, myself and my three business partners get together in an executive meeting with one with our, our lead accountant and go through our numbers, right? And so we spend an afternoon going through and, and knowing our numbers, right? And so that's the last 10% of your time because if you don't know your numbers, you don't know how to project your company forward, right? And to continue focusing on what that better, you know, building on that 1%, like what, what do I need to build on this month? Exactly. But then like also we looking back, week, exactly. Too. And then looking back and seeing what we did because history repeats itself, right? Um, and that's true in everything, um, no matter what it is, business, um, a, a, a country, war, anything like that, history repeats itself. So if you don't know what you're doing in your past, you don't know what to do to to build on your future, right? Um, but 70% is the relationships, right? Um, and you were talking about getting into our cabinet. So uh, last week, we did, we had 13, 13 closings last week on, on 13 different properties. And um, of those, two of them were completely random, right? So we can take those two out. But out of the other 11, relationships derived every piece of these deals. Interesting. Right? And so 
Um, we've got the two that are random. Then one of them is a lady who we have bought anywhere from one to four properties at a time, um, just about every single quarter. Like every quarter, it, it, it's, it's been random. Like it would be one month and then we would skip three months and she would bring us some more, skip three months, she'd bring us more. And then the next month she would have some more and then six months. Um, but this month she had one deal for us and two months ago she had three deals for us. And so this is a lady that she owns a bunch of properties. She knows a bunch of people. And so we have kept a very strong relationship with her. And in doing so, um, she has other family members. She has a former husband and then um, grown children who all have properties and who are all investors who have bought properties from us and sold properties to us, right? And so that relationship derives a big piece of our business. So that was on the acquisition side. So we've got her. And then um, we had another guy who we've bought some properties from before that we bought 10 properties from last week, right? And so all in one deal. And so out of those, on the offload side, we have an investor who has partnered with us in a number of deals, who also has his own active portfolio, who wanted, who was looking for seven to 10 more deals. He was ready for seven seven to 10 more deals. So he bought all those from us. We wholesaled him all of those. Wow. Um, And I think we... We wholesale them. I think we put a flat fee on there for each one, seventy five hundred bucks. So, so I'm going like to jump seventy five thousand dollars. That's on incredible. So uh, wholesaling. Can you run through that for the? There's a lot of beginners because obviously I'm on the show and I'm a beginner. Absolutely. And as we've talked about relationships, so let's just be honest. Like if I put myself around people that are doing. 13 deals in a week, how many deals am I going to get in three months or six months or 12 months? So we talked now? about that a while ago. So, and, and I heard you, you know, you were talking about earlier when you came in about wholesaling some deals and stuff and what, what we don't, we actually wholesaled our first once, well, Boone and I had been in business for like six years, just kind of slowly train rolling, didn't ever get anything going. And I've talked about this story before, but finally we started bringing in coaches and really figuring out how to do this whole real estate thing the, the right way. And when we did, we wholesaled our first 14, 14 deals. But we did that. Wow. We did that in, in, in a month, right? And so after that, we quit wholesaling. We got another business coach that had gotten his, had earned his original wealth in real estate. And then he's opened up and he's got 50 something businesses now, right? And wow. so um, he said, don't pigeonhole yourself into becoming the wholesaler, right? Because what happens is, is you, you build a business that's transactional for yourself. So we actually, after we wholesaled those first 14 deals, we didn't wholesale another deal for 18 months. Everything that we did, we raised the capital and put it into our portfolio. Because what we wanted to do was generate passive wealth for ourselves and generate our future today. Like we, we wanted to do that as that. fast as we What's could. What's that freedom number? Right, exactly. So we, we found that. And built that out. And then once we got to that point, we said, okay, now we're at a point to where if we didn't do anything else, we've got enough properties to be set. Our families are set, right? And so now we can start really kind of diversifying what we do. And so now um, we're, we're doing, you know, 30-ish. Last month, I think Evan said that we had 32 or 33 deals that we did, right? Cool. And so with that, we don't need to take down all of those and put them into our portfolio anymore, right? right? And so we'll keep anywhere from five to 10 minimum. Um, If we need to keep more, we will on a given month, but then anything over and above that, we will partner with or sell to other investors as a wholesale, right? And so one thing that I wanted to talk to you about what you were mentioning earlier was, you know, doing some wholesales and getting rolling. Well, actually the way we do our deals, um, within three months, we'll pull a portion of equity out and get kind of our wholesale fee um, within three months of, of closing on a deal, right? And so there's no reason for us to wholesale because that generates us cash now, but it also puts a property into our portfolio that's going to generate us long-term wealth as well. Got right. It. Got and it. so if you, if you decide early on that you want to wholesale and all you do is start wholesaling, it's really, really hard to get out of doing that because you'll see um, when we did those 14 wholesale deals early on, I think our average, the average number was like $18,500 across 14 of them. So that's a big chunk of change really quick. Not right? bad. And so once you start doing that, you see that money and you're like, dang, I don't want to do anything else. And so you just wholesale, 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 and you get trapped in that game, right? And then you decide, oh man, I like the money now. And so I don't want to start adding these deals to my portfolio, right? 
And so it's short-term sacrifice for long-term gains is what that is, right? Um, and so we didn't want to get pigeonholed into that. And so we decided that, look, we're going to stop wholesaling now, right after that first month, and we're going to start putting our properties into our portfolio. And so it's not that difficult to do that. Um, you just have to figure out a system and a process that is efficient so that you can replicate it really, really quickly, right? Got but it. you asked what wholesaling was, right? And yeah. so so we have, um, we've, we've built, we were talking about relationships today, right? So we've built a number of relationships um, with investors and other people who have bought properties from us, who have partnered with us on deals. Um, and with that, we've created a high number of people that um, want to continue doing properties in their own portfolio while also investing with us and doing stuff with us as well. And so that way they've got some active capital working for them. They're, they're doing some deals with their own money. And then they're also doing some deals, um, putting their money to work for them where they don't have to touch it. Right. And so it's all turnkey processes. We generate them a strong return um, with that money and they don't have to do anything. And so what we do with those guys is when we get, influx of properties coming in and we're not going to keep all of them we will give those guys first choice first right of refusal on the on the deals that we come in that we have coming in and so um one of our partners money was like you know hey i'm i need about i've got this amount of money to spend i want to get you know seven to ten properties he knew he, he knew with that amount of money with the deals that we do he could get seven to ten of them right wow. and so we just said all right we've got we actually got a, a portfolio we've got ten properties that came in i think it would be a great little portfolio. They're all in a really close location around one of the colleges that we focus on. Um, I think they're within uh, a three or four block um, parameter, right? And so we got all those ready for him. Um, some of them needed a little bit of rehab, some don't. And so we put together the package, said, okay, we'll do a flat fee, $7,500 per property. You can have them. Um, he's happy paying that because it's still a big discount. Even with, after the construction on all of them that needs to be done, um, one of our construction companies that, that we partner with has already gotten him the quotes on everything. He's going to be all in at like 58 cents on the, uh, after repair value. Right. And so he's going to own a property that's, um, that's worth X. Let's say each of them on average is a hundred thousand dollars per door. Um, so oh, the total wow. portfolio is worth a hundred thousand per door. So about a million bucks and he'll be all in at $580,000. Right. And so he'll have over $400,000 of equity in that deal, um, even with wow. our wholesale fee on top of it, right? And, and that's just one client. That's just one client, right, <laughs> yeah. And so Jeez. those other three last week, we're keeping those. Um, you know, we were gonna hang on to those, but then the week before that, we had a couple of deals that, that we wholesaled off to another client. And then today, um, working on a new relationship, 70% of your time should be uh, focused around relationships. So Boone and Mac, um, were out in LA this weekend. I saw that. Um, they came back and had raised over $4 million and almost 4 million of it from one new relationship that they built, right? And so already today, um, we've partnered with um, the lady, I, I am not gonna share her name yet. I don't know that we're, I, I don't I don't wanna share her name yet. We haven't talked to her right. about that. Um, but I did notice she followed our podcast this morning. So um, she, she may be watching this right now and, and feel free to blast your name out or tag yourself in this if you are watching that. Um, but uh, we're going to partner with her on a, on a multifamily that we've got under contract right now okay. with a portion of her money. And then she's going to buy a, a, a pack of 13 properties that we have under, uh, under contract right now. So we'll wholesale those 13 to her. Cool. And, and then she's got enough capital to do four or five more uh, single family houses. So she's going to go from, she's done a couple of deals on her own. So she's going to go from doing a couple of deals to having under 30 doors under asset management, just like that from wow. one relationship, right? So she met us. We've got something that we can provide to her. She's got some capital that she wants to put to work. And so that's a strong new relationship that we have, right? Um, they picked up a couple more relationships. And so you can see that 70% of our time is, is w built around creating new relationships, working on existing relationships and how we can work together, whether that's buying properties from somebody, um, that thir those 13 properties that um, she's buying in a portfolio is actually a relationship that we've been working with under one of our um, uh, coaching and education seminars that we went through. It was somebody that we met through there um, like over two years ago and we've just maintained a relationship with him and he called up a while back and was like, Hey, I've got these 13 properties that are in a town that I don't really focus on much anymore. 
He's like, I'm getting tired of, of, of manage, managing those and dealing with those. Um, I don't want to travel as much. Do you know anybody or are you interested in those? And we were like, yeah, we're absolutely interested in those. And then we were talking to her about them and she's like, oh, I'd like to do those. And so she's going to do those with her IRA, um, put that to work for her. And then, you know, that'll be a relationship that we just continue to build on. She's going to come out here from California in probably a week or two and we'll go tour her on her properties and a lot of the properties that we're doing and things like that. Right? Awesome. Awesome. So that's and so uh, is that question, my own question. So is that what you talk about? Like off market properties when you talk about stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. Because these are owned by someone else. So they're not on the market necessarily. Well, they're, they're owned by somebody else, but that somebody else is not listed. Them. So the right. market is, you know, the MLS, multiple listing service. Okay. And, listed with a realtor or whatever a realtor goes and takes those and puts those on the market. And so now you can get on realtor.com or Zillow, or you can talk to a realtor and, they and can find those properties, properties and those properties are actively listed on the Got market, it. right? These are properties that we have actively been marketing. We've been sending our d direct marketing to, and they call and say, Hey, I actually am interested in selling or I've got this problem. I do need to sell. And then some of those that was from, you know, like I said, like, um, these, these two that, uh, were random. That's from random new marketing, right? And then the 10 were from a guy that we already had a relationship with. We constantly talked to him. Hey, whenever you got more properties, let me know. He's like, I actually do. I've got these. I want to sell them, right? I've got this issue. Like I'm focusing, he's actually focusing on a, uh, on a big uh, development project in a downtown area, um, doing some more like commercial development and it's going to be uh, an entertainment type thing. So he needs a lot of capital for that. And got so it. he's like, yeah, I've got 10 properties that need some, um, that need some quite a bit of deferred maintenance done to them, capital expenditures, some rehabs. He's like, I don't want to pour capital into that. I'd rather take my capital out and put it to work with this project that I'm doing now. So um, we bought those. And like I said, at a, Interesting. we bought them at, you know, 45 cents on the dollar. So he less. sold that taking that reinvesting into this new yeah, project. Yeah, he's going to put that into a new project. That's super and, cool. Um and then the other lady, you know, she's just she's an elderly lady. What she's been doing is every time a property's uh, a tenant moves out, she's slowly offloading her um, portfolio. And so she's not wanting to sell them with tenants in them. So as a tenant moves out, as there's maintenance and and work that needs to be done, she just calls us, "Hey, I've got another one that moved out. Y'all want to buy it?" Right? So she doesn't list it, doesn't do anything. As soon as the tenant moves out, she's like I'm not ready to do the work. I don't want to do the work. I'm tired of doing this. Got another property for you. Interesting. Right? So again, from from me, I'm trying to learn how you guys are staying ahead. Yeah. So this is how you're developing these relationships. And then these deals kind of filter in to, to what you're already marketing towards. So it's exactly. like a seesaw effect almost, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we constantly, once you start sending direct mail out, you never want to stop, right? The day that you stop is when leads will stop coming in, right? Got it. And so we've got um, in the... 12 or so markets that we're in right now. Um, we've got anywhere from, I think this we're in one market that's a little bit of smaller market. And so we don't want to ramp it up too, too fast. Um, but there is a college there. So uh, we've got two campaigns going at any given time there. And so with those two campaigns, we've got weekly mail that's going out every single week with those mm -hmm. two campaigns. Then we've got markets like here in DFW. I think we've got like 10, maybe 10 different campaigns going at any time in specific different zip codes, right? And so those 10 campaigns, we have mail going out every single week on those 10 campaigns. Got and it. so that's how, you know, it's constantly going out. And those are leads that, you know, those are the new leads, like these two here that just completely random. We got new mail going out. We got mail going out on a, on a whatever campaign that it is. It's just constantly going out. And whenever somebody decides they're ready to sell, we're on front of mind. They call us, right? But with those others, it's somebody that may have gotten some mail of ours a year or two years ago. We've created a relationship. We've bought a property from them or done this or done that. We'll talk about creating relationships with your property managers, with anybody that you work with, creating Absolutely. that relationship, right? And so I talk about this story all the time. We've got one favorite property manager that like we wine and dine her pretty well now because every month she brings us a portfolio deal. And we strategically created relationships with property managers that are exactly who we want. There's a very strategic region, reason of why we choose the property managers that we choose. Like I'm not looking for somebody that's just young and full of energy going out there and trying to build their new business, right? I'm looking for somebody who is ready to start tapering it down because what are they going to do? They're going to call us every time they got a property. Uh, I got it. Or another, yeah. Another uh, investor of theirs has 
either passed away or is is offloading his portfolio or whatever the case may be. Yep. And so almost like clockwork every month, that property manager brings us a portfolio. That's whether awesome. It's, you know, somebody, some small investor that has two, four or five deals, or we've gotten some from her that were as big as 26 deals, like 26 properties in a portfolio. And I, there's been a in number one, of in times one in one month, and there's been a number of times uh -huh. that we'll get eight, 10 or 12, like she'll have an investor. Hey, I think last month it was an investor uh, that had, I don't know who this is that just walked in. They don't work for me though, but um, they had uh, a portfolio. They had moved to Tennessee, um, were wanting to get rid of their properties here in Texas and redeploy that capital in Tennessee because they, they have a job. Um, they enjoy their job. They actually worked for a university and they were relocated to a different, uni or they took a job with a new university. And so they want to hold properties in the town where they're at, right? Of and so he had 10 properties and um, she called and she's like, hey, uh, you know, this professor's moving, he's relocating, he's taking his portfolio, he wants to go out there and buy properties out there. He just wants to offload everything that he's got here. It was, you know, boom, let's, let's do that. Wow. Absolutely, right? And so, like I said, almost every month, something like that from her. And so we strategically create relationships like that um, around knowing, you know, thinking eight moves ahead. Like, what are we going to do with this relationship? Why are we creating right. this relationship? What are we going to do in the future with it? Right. Unbelievable. <clears throat> and that's, well, right. And that that's why it came down to, you know, and if people want to get educated on that, they need to get around people that are actually doing that, that are actually creating those relationships. And that's why you see me- Your network uh, is your network. Yeah, on my right. phone. I promote everybody's deals in, in our group. Yeah. Or people that are looking for properties. I shared Jamie this morning. I shared Mitzi. Uh, my buddy TJ's got a lot of deals. Mm -hmm. I want people, their stuff to be out there. Who knows uh, what email we might need at any given moment. Or exactly. someone else might need a, a, a San Antonio this morning, and then there was this the other day, and this the other day. Yeah, I don't know, but the more I pump that out, the more people know. Okay, well, maybe I'll get a response in this group. And I've seen two weeks later now somebody jumped on a post I shared in wholesaling full time Absolutely. and started getting responses from people, Absolutely. which is awesome. And it, that's just well, you got to start from the bottom, like we talked yeah. about last week. Uh, I'm not on page 17 anymore. I'm on page 18 this week. Yeah. And then page 19. Yeah. If I'm putting myself into the marketplace as somebody's positive, trying to help people get deals, that karma is going to come back to me. Yeah. No, absolutely. So like I was, I was thinking about this this morning. I actually, I was recording some video for some stuff this morning. And um, when we go, when I go into a new market, um, depending on what I'm wanting to do there, like if I'm going into a market for vacation purposes, um, or if I'm going into a market to open up a, a total new acquisitions arm, um, I don't want to go in and just do one or two deals, right? No. So if it's a vacation market, I want to go in and I want to get to 10 properties like that, right? Because that's what justifies that property manager there that I'm going to use, uh, the, the, uh, vacation rental property manager. Right. And so creating relationships quickly is what helps you escalate that on a, on a quick basis. Right. Yep. Um, so I may go in, I'll start creating a relationship and somebody may have three properties for me immediately in that, in that area. Right. Or if I'm going in, so what we'll do in other markets is myself and my COO, um, you know, I, I was kind of talking about this this morning. So I go in and what, what I've done and what, what I advise a lot of our clients to do as far on, on like the coaching side is, when you're rolling out your business, focus for 90 days on systems and processes. Master the process, right? Yep. Focus on the process, don't focus on the result, right? And so after those 90 days, results will start coming 30, 60, 90, right? And then after 90 days, you're going to have big results rolling in, right? And so if you're focusing on mastering the process in that time, by the end of 90 days, you've got that process down, you know, it like the back of your hand, right? Yep. So then what do you do? The next thing you do is you start training your replacement, right? And so that's the exact same thing that I did. I mastered my process. Boone and I got it down and then each of us started training our replacement. So we now have two, two other people that we would bring in that would start doing what we do. Right. Awesome. Um, and then, you know, our partners come in. So our partners kind of did the same thing. Right. And so then our replacements run our acquisitions business here at our headquarters. Right. And so then, you know, we've got our COO now. And so I've trained her up. I had her set through five of my um, mastermind coaching events. Right. And so now she's seen me coach it exactly what we do. She sees me implement it. She sees our team implement it. So she knows what's going on. And so after she had done that, 
Now my COO and I will go out and when we're going into a new market, she and I will go out, we'll, we'll create our relationships up front, spend 30 days focusing on that market and we'll build out a new team of two to four people in that market, wow. wherever that is. Because if we're doing a new acquisitions market, I want two to four people ready to go so that we can get to 25 properties really quickly. And, and I talk about this with creating your relationship with property managers where you're at. You want to be able to walk in with a handful, a small portfolio that you can go in and generate that relationship really quickly. And that's how you do that. You don't do that by going in and picking up one, two, three properties at a time. You want to go in and you want to get 25 properties in one location really close together around that university or whatever it is that you're working with, right? So that you can build a system and an economy of scale really quickly, right? That's and then amazing. that's what helps build out your relationships. And then that person just, me, again, from the outside looking in, that person's going to go out of their way. Absolutely you, they are, right? Because like you're just when, shoveling value to them. Yeah, you're going to walk in. And so I'll walk into a property manager and, you know, this is what this is what we did with some of our favorites. So we've got uh, a handful that, that bring us deals like that. Now, our one favorite, she brings them almost monthly now, but the others will bring them, you know, quarterly or maybe a couple of times a year. But what we do is we'll go in and, you know, I'll, I'll structure that relationship. We'll role play real quick. Like walk in and, you know, Hey Pat, it's great to meet you. Like I know, I know from, from talking with you on the phone, you, you've got a very well established property management company. You've got, you know, about 1500 properties that are under management. You've been doing this for a while. You got a number of clients here. I would really like to work with you. I'm afraid I'm probably not the client that is best suited for you because I don't have a big portfolio of properties, right? I've got more than one or two. I've got 25 properties right now. So that may be a little bit smaller portfolio than what you like to work with because I know you said you've got 1,500 that you're already working with. I only have 25. But my plan is within the year, I'm going to have 100 properties in this area. Like it only took me two or three months to get these 25 here. So we're really well on track to having 100. So um, you know, I know that's kind of a small portfolio, but is that something that you would work with? Well, what am I doing? I'm setting a precedence that they're a, an expert at what they're doing. Absolutely. Right? It's a my compliment. 25 properties right. is over 1% of what they already have. Right. A 1% client is a great client. And I know that, but I'm making it feel like I'm a smaller client than what she would, or you would expect. And when they realize that I'm coming in with 25 properties immediately and I've done that in two to three months and I'm going to have a hundred within the year, the light bulbs go off and they're like, yeah, this guy's a buyer. Like they're not only thinking like I'm going to get more lead, like I'm going to have a hundred properties. They're also thinking this guy's a buyer. Right. And so now when she's got a client that comes to her and says that I want to liquidate my portfolio, do you know anybody that wants to buy Boom. who comes to mind? Ty Lassiter. I love right? that. And so that's strategic. That's on purpose. I'm thinking ahead when I'm doing that. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I get that. I totally get that. And then that person, again, if I'm in that person's shoes, I want you to hit that hundred number. Absolutely. Because I want you that's to hit bringing, 150. That's bringing you those deals. You're going to get the cash flow off of that. You're going to get the property management, right? But starting out with 25 justifies me paying a property manager there. Totally. And I want them all in a close vicinity, close location, because if there is anything that goes wrong, I want to have a small economy. Like I don't want to be spread out. Because when a crisis hits, and if a crisis hits your portfolio during a down economy and your portfolio is spread out all over the place, how do you deal with that crisis? It becomes really difficult. But if that portfolio is has a small economy of scale, I, I always talk about focus narrow and cast wide, right? So if you're focusing narrow, but then you're casting wide over that, that, that little focus, then, then you're going to create your own economy. When you create your own economy, the outside market and the outside economy doesn't derive your future success, right? Oh, yeah, I right? see that. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't, it doesn't, what's the word? Crumble. Right, exactly. You're, you're, yeah, you're creating vision. your own economy, I right? And so a lot of our exit strategies are built around that too, because if all you do is fix and flips, right? If all you do is retail fix and flips and the economy goes down, and, I've, and we've talked about this before, the economy goes down, you're, you're relying on the outside market, the outside economy, right? But if you've diversified and you've got a very, um, a very good grasp on what your exit strategies are. And maybe you're doing a handful of fix and flips. So like right now, I think we have uh, five, we've got five retail fix and flips that we're probably going to do out of the deals that we've got going right now. And we've got over 45 deals under construction, right? Under, uh, our properties under construction. So those other 40 um, 
are not going to be, they're going to be a mixture of rentals and owner finance, right? So if a market goes down, the blue collar workers are typically the last ones to lose their jobs because they're still, we've still got um, labor that has to be done no matter what it is, right? Got it. And, and so it's typically the high level executives are the one percenters that are losing their jobs first, right? But the laborers are the last ones to lose their jobs. And so those are typically the ones that are coming in and taking your owner finances and are the renters in those um, those middle market areas that that seven hundred to eleven hundred dollar price point. Like that's why, you know, like Grant Cardone talks about that in his multifamilies and things like that. Um, when you're focused on 70 percent of America as your target yep. instead of 10 percent, like fix and flips. Um, 30, only 30% 30 of the United States population can qualify for a retail home loan. But then if you're niching yourself and all of your fix and flips are either, like I talked to somebody a couple of weeks ago that does high-end fix and flips, right? So if you're doing $500,000 and up fix and flips, well, you're reaching the 1% market, right? But not only is it 1% market, like only 30% of America qualifies for a home loan and you're reaching a little small target there. Yep. If your focus is 150 to 225, that first time home buyers, right? Well, again, only 30% of America qualifies, but out of that 30%, only 15 or 20% of them is the first time home buyers, right? And so you're really target niche. When the economy goes down, you end up with only one exit strategy and nothing to do. Yeah, with, right? I, I see what you're doing there. I like how you break that down too into categories. Exactly. My Everything brain, is broken down into yeah, categories. Yeah, my visual brain is able to, to visualize that. That may wow. be the one great thing about my college degree, my accounting degree yeah. that helps. I mean, it, I systematize everything. Everything has a purpose. Like I do nothing without purpose. Everything in our business is done on purpose for a reason. Yep. And That's and we, we train that top down. Right. Right. And so right. all of all of my partners are that way. And then when we bring on all of like um, Malia is is interviewing today, we're hiring three new people. Uh, over the next two weeks, right? And so she's interviewing today. So part of our interview process is we've got a very strategic, like we'll make a job posting. And with that job posting, anybody that submits a resume has to be submitted very specifically with a specific video that answers certain questions in the video. So if they just send us a resume and say, this is why I should be hired, it's immediately thrown That's out. That's Cardone Careers. Right? Yeah, I mean, exactly, I don't know how right. many song videos I sent to Cardone Exactly. That, that crap is immediately thrown out if you can't follow directions and do something on purpose. I agree with that. Like, we got one, Malia called me in yesterday. She's like, look at this. The email was in all lowercase. Like, the only thing that was uppercase was the very first letter of a, a, of a next sentence because their computer automatically did that, right? All the I's were lowercase. Names were lowercase. No attention like, to detail. No attention to detail whatsoever. Be on purpose with what you do, yeah. right? And so that's our whole like one of the one of the um, one of the people that we're hiring is just a new administrative assistant, right? Um, we had one that left last month, and or two months ago now, I guess. And so you know that's a low level position, but I still expect attention to detail and Absolutely. be on purpose with what you do, right? I love it. I love and it. And so relationships helps build that. Like we've got a number of our applicants are coming from relationships that Malia has. Like we relocated Malia up here from Houston, but she already had um, relationships here in DFW and she immediately went to work with those relationships. Who do you know that could fill this, 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 and this, right? And and we've had, I mean, I think we had 300 applicants over the last couple of days. But yeah, I noticed there were that, a lot. We yeah. talked about that last week. Yeah. Like but, 160 emails or something like and that. And that was for that last position. Yeah, we've got another one that we had 300. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so... Uh, you know, that uh, a handful of those are going to come as referrals. And so one of the ones from the 160 was a referral and that referral um, was referred to Malia from somebody. And when that person referred her, um, the referral waited four days to get in touch with us. Right. And so, you know, that, that affects that relationship. Right. right? And so Malia called the person that referred her, kind of let her know. And so because they work on their relationship together, um, you know, the, the, friend that referred the the potential uh, interviewee called the interviewee and said you never reached back out to him that hurts my relationship with them and you know she set a precedence of what she expected from them so if you set expectations and you work on those relationships constantly you never know what like you said earlier what you might need and when you might need it right, right? that good karma that 360 comes back around it exactly. really does that's amazing so um what else? What else do you think uh, would go into 
what we were talking about today. With the relationships. With the relationships. I mean, I definitely uh, made Ty get these get these out this week. I, <laughs> I barked at him and said, you know, we we want to make sure we're showing people. You, 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 people getting on your ads, calling you a scam, people yeah. getting on and our like, thing, talking smack. And it's just like, he's not really someone who's been, we just started your page. We yeah. just started this podcast. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm used to the smack talk a little bit more than you are. Yeah. Well, and see, it, <laughs> it is I mean, new because I've not you know, been in the past. I've not been one to like get out and to just like spread everything and, right. and make myself available. Right. Right. But, and, and my partners, my partners still are not. And, and that's fine because they're focused on our real estate business. So one of our one of my partners is focused on our import stuff and our construction. The other two are focused on our real estate. Right. And and so and I'm focused on two or three of our other businesses. Right. And so and then our coaching clients and stuff like that. So with that, like part of the acquisitions and stuff, you don't really need to be out there. There's no reason to. But with certain things you are, and if you want to grow, you have to get out of your comfort zone and put yourself out there. But the more you put yourself out there, one of my coaches says it this way, the higher, I've got two, one says it one way and one says it another way, and both great points. The higher up the ladder you get, the more visible you are and the bigger target you have, right? Uh -huh. So the higher up that ladder you go, the less, the fewer the people there are, so the bigger target you have on your back, right? And, and what happens is, is people become so focused on you and what you're doing out of jealousy or desire or whatever it is that they don't know what their processes are. They're not comfortable in their processes. They're not comfort in their success. Yep. And so they want to focus on you. And what happens is, is like, I don't focus on that. Like I'll continue to focus on some will, some won't, who cares, right? right? I'll continue to focus on the some that will, and I'll continue to grow myself. And I'm not focused on the people that are going to hate or you know, make ridiculous comments because all that's going to do is that it's going to affect their ability to create and build relationships and it's going to stunt their success and their growth. And boy, right? I mean, the engagement on that ad just kept going up. It did. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? <laughs> you know what's funny? The ad that had the most haters also was the highest converting ad. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable, right? And because like I've never been one to hold out like checks and show, you know, I know. and typically the checks, those checks will, I've, I've sh shown those a couple of times and it's been on our wholesales. Right, just our wholesale deals, and for some reason that was the one that converted the most. Like I, it was almost to the verge of taking it down. I called my marketing director that runs our marketing, and I said, "I want to make some changes. I'm going to take a couple of ads down." And she said, "All right, before you do, I want to go through real quickly with your conversion rates." Yeah. And when she told me, I said, "All right, thanks. Uh, I don't really have anything that we need to take down now, <laughs> right?" And so um, we went through our numbers, and that's part of that ten percent, knowing your numbers, right? Yep. And so she gave me my numbers for what they are, and, and those converted. But my other coach says, "You know, the the monkey, the higher the, up the tree the monkey goes, the the bigger his ass looks, right?" Yep. And and so you know that's that's what happens is like I'm focused on our system and process and how we yeah. grow our business not focused on what other people think because what other people think about me is none of my business. Right. Right. Because you're always going to have haters. And, and JT talks about this. He, he tells me this all the time. And it was, it's when I first started realizing it, that when I first started making myself available and posting things on social media and stuff like that, I started seeing haters and I came to him and I was like, what do I do about this? What do I do about this one? What, do I delete it? Do I do this? And he's like, who cares? Like, honestly, what that is, is free publicity. It if is. they're going to get on there and talk about you, what does that mean? That means they're thinking about you, right? Yeah, that's like Sean right? Whalen so, talks about. Exactly. It. Like, we, I'm like the landlord. I called you in your about head. that when I saw that, and you were already tagging me. Yeah. I was Sean like, Whalen says it yeah. best, dude. Haters are fans. They are fans because they're thinking about you, right? And so, and I, I'm not individually thinking about them. I'm thinking on a, a system and a process. How do I continue to grow my right. business and gr build my funnel and, bigger and, and get your sheets? And, You're not used to. You guys were yeah, like, oh, and so I don't know. I'm like. Do it. Yeah. Just and it's bring like, a couple of them out. 13 deals in one week. It's just like, yeah. What, where, how many questions can you possibly answer? Yeah. I mean, and I'm and we're doing on this for free. Forward. I'm taking time, uh, you know, away from Almost him drink. providing uh, more value to the client so that he can do this online for free for everyone. Right. So exactly. that's the whole point of the show is to start. I'm a beginner mindset on this. I don't know. I've never done a real estate deal. I've gotten some leads. Uh, we're about to some take care of that. We've we're we're going to get some stuff. We've got a handful of deals that came in last week and we'll look through those and figure that's out which one. That's just amazing. Ones, and then we'll and figure it, out how And it we goes right it. back to it. I mean, who are you sitting next to? Exactly. Who are you working with? When I played that, that event, 
for Grant, the 10X event, the best advice he gave me was, man, you got to find guys in real estate, man. <laughs> because those are the guys that got your monthly marketing cash. Get exactly. out of the restaurants. Exactly. Get out of get out of this, 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 and this. Because you're going to be making the same money there five years from now. If you're able to grow these real estate guys, then they have way more to kick back to your family. Entrepreneurs, especially entrepreneurs that follow the 70-20-10, if they know their numbers, like I have marketing budgets for every piece of our business, right? Like I have a marketing budget for every campaign that we start for motivated sellers with our marketing when we're sending direct mail out. Like I'll typically start with 5,000 bucks on a new campaign. When we've got a new campaign going out, it's $5,000 immediately attributed to that, right? And so, you know, whatever market we've got different, like in DFW, I think we spend fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a month on, wow. on marketing, right? And then, and then that that differs when we're in our secondary markets. If we're going, you know, great a great market market is like in Ann Arbor, Michigan, right? So it's a small, it's not a huge city. It's there's about seventy five or a hundred thousand. And people that's where the college that. is, right? Exactly. Mich right. Michigan's there. The Wolverines, I'm with right? You here. And so it's not a big, it's not a big location. Their football stadium actually would seat every single person in the population of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh, wow. Right. And so, you know, what that is, in is it's a lot of travel that comes in there. Right. But a, a college of that size derives a strong economy and where you've got that many students that come in, you've obviously got to have a medical system that will, that will take care of that many students influx in population. Right. And then where you've got government paying jobs, like a university, the university is the, the last place to get shut down. If the government really, if, if all things goes to hell, Got the last thing being shut down is the university. Oh, right? yeah. And totally. so there's government jobs. And where there's government jobs, where there's students, so there's student loans, you've got a lot, you've got not just the government jobs like at the you school, you've got the your maintenance. Own economy. Exactly. You've got the maintenance, you've got people that take care of all the landscaping on the whole colleges, you've got all the construction companies and stuff. So you got to have banks, right? And so those are the three strong things that derive a strong economy, right? And so that is that is one of the best places to go in. And so if we go into a place like that, it doesn't take near as much marketing. It's a secondary market, right? Right. And so my marketing budget there may be only $2,500 a month. But that $2,500 a month it's will hitting. turn three, four, or five deals oh, as opposed to $20,000 a month in DFW that only gets three, four, or five deals. But now the deals in DFW are going to be a stronger equity position. It's going to be bigger deals, Right. The ones in a secondary market are going to be smaller deals. So I, I may it. be spending I may be spending thirty to fifty thousand dollars per acquisition in a secondary market, where I'm spending one hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty in a primary market. Like our average deal in DFW purchase and rehab is one hundred and almost one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. In the secondary market, purchase and rehab is under fifty five thousand bucks. Wow. Right? Okay. But it yeah. typically will still derive the same gross revenue. Yeah, that's what uh, the math I'm doing in my head. I like the visuals you provide too. There's there's tiers to this. There is. There's tiers. There's and you tiers. want to diversify. Yeah. Right? Interesting. Uh, Craig said one of the best in Nashville, Paul Kazanowski. Oh, I'm best friends with Paul. I'm great friends with him. With uh, JT Fox. Yeah, he does. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, tell Paul I said hello. Yeah. Yeah, Paulie's a great guy. I was actually, I talked to him a couple of days ago. So yep. I, I love Paulie. That's awesome. Um, Craig, that's funny that you but know that's him. just how quick it could be to where, you know, another one of my podcast clients is now doing deals with us. I'm we're, working with Polly on some deals in one of our vacation markets. Oh, there Florida. you go. See, yeah. so it's already happening. And yeah. again, that's the power of what we're doing here is we're, we're, we're doing this. I'm, I'm dragging Ty out of the office and onto the internet because <laughs> I know that long term, this is going to help your business get more deals. I just yeah. know it. Because yeah. we're going to build relationships with an online group of people. Craig, man, we're going to have, we got to get Paulie on our podcast. He's got a personality about like you. He's just bigger than He's life. Bumping. He's an Eastern European, moved to Canada, and then um, came to the United States. And then he, I mean, he went from rags to riches. Oh, all, really? All, yeah, he's rags In Nashville? to riches. Well, he came into California first and went from California to Vegas. Um, found a mentor and a partner in Vegas that he started building property, building new construction with in Vegas. Um, back in the early nineties and then he moved to Nashville. He's been in Nashville for a while now, him and his wife. Relationships family, though. They, they live part of the year in Nashville and part of the year down in Florida. That's so awesome. So, yeah, great it. guy. But yeah, relationships, that's exactly it, right? Everything. Yeah. So get out there, plant some positive seeds this week, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, obviously, uh, feel free to, um, 
hit us up with any questions. He said, Polly's coming on with us on Craig Jackson uh, show. Awesome. Soon. I so love it. <laughs> maybe we'll do, a, do another. Make sure you get your settlements right. Get them done out there. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Awesome.